Raycasting in Minecraft. You can use it for a lot of things, but today I'm going to show you how to do it. So as you can see when I right click this carrot on a stick, a beam of barrier particles shoots out of my face. If the beam hits a block, you can see that it says hit in chat. If it doesn't hit a block, the beam terminates after a certain amount of time. So what's happening is that when I right click, this tower of command blocks is being triggered. What they do is summon an area effect cloud entity, which basically acts like a point. You can use an armor stand if you want to. It then teleports the entity to be at the player's head, and to face the direction in which the player is facing. Then we have this command block over here, which teleports the entity one block forward in whichever direction it's facing, using the carrot, uh, the carrot, I think it's called, in the TP command, instead of the squiggly lines. So let's take a look at the commands for spawning the ray. So I have a scoreboard set up called Raygun, which is triggered by the carrot on the stick. When the score gets set to 1, this first command is triggered. It summons the area effect cloud 1.5 blocks above the player's feet. This is roughly where the player's head is. It summons it with a tag ray, with a radius of 0, so it's literally just a point, and a really long duration. This next command is then triggered because it's in a chain command block. It runs at the player's head because it's positioned 1.5 blocks above the feet. It just teleports the ray entity to be rotated as the player, basically. Third command is really basic, it's just resetting the scoreboard for the players. Now let's look at the command that drives the ray forward. So what it's doing is it's executing the command as the ray entity at the ray entity. It checks if the block positioned at the entity is air, and if so it teleports the entity 0.3 blocks forward in whichever direction it's facing. The reason that it's set to 0.3 blocks is because if it was any more, then it'd be likely to skip blocks because it would just jump over the corners of, of blocks, or at least more significant corners of blocks. Of course, if we only have one command block running this command, it's not going to be very fast, and it's certainly not going to be instant. If we instead stack a crap ton of these command blocks on top of each other as chain command blocks, this will run the command so many times so quickly that it's near enough to being instant. The next set of commands is just to make it self-terminate if it doesn't hit anything within a certain amount of time. This bit is easy, just set up a scoreboard called RayAge, and set up a repeating command block that adds 1 to the value of that score every tick. Then set up another command block that just kills all the ray entities that have a score that's greater than 30. It doesn't have to be 30, it can be whatever you want it to be. It just depends on how far you want your ray to go. So these are the commands for when the ray actually hits something. So in the first one, we're executing as the ray at the ray to check if the block positioned at the ray is air. If not, then it runs the command to tag the entity with the hit tag. That then triggers the next command block, so the chain command block which is where you put whatever event you want to trigger. For us, it's just a Telerol command saying hit in chat. The last command just kills the entity as soon as it's run whatever event it's supposed to run. And that's it. I'll put the structure file in the description in case you want to take a closer look. I hope you learned something, and have a good day.